absolutely incredible story broke today, a story that is too big to ignore for your liberal press, who have been forced to tell a tale that they absolutely despise. Around 1 o'clock this morning, as Justice Brett Kavanaugh, his wife, and two kids slept, Nicholas John Roski, seen here in a picture from the New York Post, pulled up outside Kavanaugh's house in a taxi cab and stepped out. He was wearing all black, carrying a backpack with a tactical chest rig, a tactical knife, a Glock with two magazines, zip ties, duct tape, a hammer, and a crowbar. When Roski steps out of the cab, he spots two U.S. Marshals parked right outside Kavanaugh's home. Oops. He turns and walks away, goes down the block, calls police on himself, says he's suicidal and he wanted to take Kavanaugh with him on his way out the door. Roski was angry about Uvalde, Texas, he said, and indications that Roe versus Wade would be overturned. He admitted all of this, probably hoping that there'd be some sympathy for him, because in this country, a lot of times, there is that. You can do anything you want if you have the right politics. The reason the mainstream press and Democrats despise this story is Nicholas John Roski is a product of their ridiculous rhetoric, rhetoric that they use to destabilize this country so they can win elections. They have been grooming the radical left for this type of behavior for years now, telling them the world is coming to an end whenever Republicans have power. You have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. They intend to wage an all out assault on more of our rights. We've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, th they know that we mean business. What do they care? They have security. They're taken care of. They don't care what happens to everyone else. It's just politics to them. It's all a game. It's a, it's a power game. It's a money game. And it's just more definitive proof that the Democrat Party truly puts nothing above their own personal power. Nothing. Every single move conservatives make somehow gets twisted into life or death for Democrat voters. And they just sit there and gobble it all up on MSNBC all day long. They've even labeled conservative speech as hate speech now. You've seen that happen. So even when we just open our mouths, we're already committing an atrocity. This is how you keep people voting, right? You scare the hell out of people. Consequences be damned. They did this for four years of Donald Trump, and then to rile up the base for 2020, they convinced the entire country that cops do nothing but hunt black people for sport. Police are supposed to protect and serve, but it's clear that they are protecting the beneficiaries of inherent racist policies. And of course, cities have to end the racist policing of black communities. That's where we all started. Racist sheriffs and police free to commit untold violence against anyone they please. We have to stop the black killing fields. And it was rhetoric like that that killed more black people than anything else. BLM burned down the entire country. Inner city crime exploded. Thousands more black young men have been killed in the wake of their social justice efforts. But hey, they won the election. Mission accomplished. Again, consequences be damned, they won the election. That's the most important part. You see where I'm going. Sadly, the attempted murder of Brett Kavanaugh was quite predictable. Why do you think those U.S. Marshals were outside of his home? There's more pictures of cops. I believe that's from tonight, actually. Well, they were there at 1 o'clock in the morning because Democrats thrive off of this dangerous energy, and Democrats condone all of this. Democrats have told their angry constituents that it is just perfectly fine to loathe Brett Kavanaugh, to wish terrible things on him, because he, of course, is truly horrible. They told us this many times. Brett Kavanaugh is a rapist who wants to destroy women's rights while protecting the right to murder kids with AR-15. Somebody that awful? Do anything you want to him. Trump was an illegitimate president. His Supreme Court justices are also illegitimate. You must resist. Democracy is at stake. Your life is at stake. People like Brett Kavanaugh want to take your freedoms. They want to destroy your life. You have to resist. This is the messaging. This is what they do. How do you think unhinged lunatics on the left are going to react to messaging like that? That is the messaging from today's Democrat Party.
Biden's former mouthpiece told us just a couple months ago that it's okay to intimidate Supreme Court justices, to go outside of their homes, to broadcast where they live to the world. The media goes there. The protests go there. The law be damned. This is all completely fine, according to the White House. I know that there's an outrage right now, I guess, about uh, protests that have been peaceful to date, and we certainly continue to encourage that outside of judges' homes, and that's the president's position. That's the president's position. It's fine to do that outside. How do you, how do you think he knew where to go? Protests. People figured it out. Doxing. They got his address. They put it all over the Internet. A lunatic in California flies to D.C., drives to Maryland. Boom. It is a crime, of course, to intimidate a Supreme Court justice. It's a crime to be outside of his house screaming at him. Unless, of course, it's politically advantageous to the party in power and the attorney general. Then, as far as we can tell, it's perfectly fine. Imagine if those marshals hadn't been there at 1 o'clock in the morning. I mean, imagine if they said, hey, you know what, screw this. Let's go get a you know, Burger King break. Let's go get a Whopper at 1 a.m. You'd likely have a dead Supreme Court justice. Perhaps his wife and his kids shot to death as well. All to stir up enough chaos to motivate their lunatic fringe to vote. And tonight in Maryland, protesters are back at Kavanaugh's home. You think Merrick Garland would allow this kind of activity at Sonia Sotomayor's house? And one other thing to think about, as the assault on the Second Amendment occurs every single day for the last month, I'd bet my bottom dollar that Brett Kavanaugh's got a pistol in his house. And I bet he's really glad he does tonight. Think about that. Because you don't have U.S. Marshals outside your home.